All right, we're going to be doing some Modern Horizons 2 Limited today. Still trying to draft a Raghavan. That's what we're trying to do today. Uh, I have to tell you, my brain is tired all the garbage I've had to put up with for two days related to my car I am I am exhausted <laughs> I'll be completely honest Haas00312, thank you for following. You're a wonderful human being, and I appreciate the follow. That's Six Sigma. Resubscribed for 12 months. You're a wonderful human being. Um, <laughs> it's a happy anniversary, bitch. That one got me. Nice. <clears throat> no worries. No worries at all. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Oh man. Hopefully we get we get lucky. Maybe maybe some karmic balance for all of the real life stuff to be dealing with. You can open an expensive card or two. Oh, you'll be betting? Good, good. I'll be sure to make sure the um predictions go up when we actually start playing. Tarek, it's not my birthday, but welcome. <laughs> Time to lose some skulls. Nice. Wow, oh, man. Mm. Depending on how I feel, this might only be a one. Um, this might only be a one draft stream. Because I still have to record for tomorrow, unless I can come up with a hilarious meme video to put up instead. <laughs> so I've got to get uh, I've got to get Mixum's video recorded for Patreon before the month is out too. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. I meant to do that this week, and I have been swamped with stuff.
Sorry, I'm snacking on some sweet tart ropes. I'm hoping the sugar will help keep me sustained. Yep. But that's what we're here for. We're trying to make it better. One brown dog on video camera at a time. <laughs> Hot takes on yesterday's announcement. Um, I think uh, for if you're talking about the magic showcase I am I'm still not thrilled about universes beyond uh, I don't think bringing other IPs to magic is going to I'm, I'm probably wrong by the way I don't think bringing other IPs to magic is good for the long term health of the game but that's my personal opinion um, I think it'll probably sell gangbusters despite my wishes for it not to um, but the only hot take that I have really is the most underwhelming set that they revealed of the four premier standard sets was Dominaria. Um, I think uh, Neon Kamigawa is going to be interesting. Uh, I suspect they may bring back energy for it. Uh, I like the art style. I like how it looks. Um, I'm concerned that that set is going to be too high of power level uh, because the original Kamigawa was too low of power level. So that that's one of the biggest complaints they got. So I'm worried that it's just going to be like Throne of Eldraine all over again, and we're going to have two years of having to deal with that card in, or that set's cards in standard. Um, but the biggest biggest problem that I have is Dominaria seems like an underwhelming idea for a set because uh, it's just Dominaria. There's no taglines. Um, I'm super excited for the like turn of the century gangster demon city set. Uh, I think that set looks awesome because there's like Art Deco stuff going on there. Um, but Dominaria, Dominaria should have been an event set. They should have done something big, like um, like War of the Spark was an event set. It was set on Ravnica, but it wasn't a Ravnica oriented set. There, it was centered around the event that was going on. They should have done something like that for Dominaria because any storyline that they put on Dominaria, other than like the last one that they did, um, is probably just going to be like daunted by the remainder of all of the stories that have happened there already. But that's just my opinion. Glad you're liking the Porter Cam Mob. Kefka, how's it going? How's hammer time and paper treating you? Yeah, this Q time though, I know, right? <laughs> it's just my opinions. I I'm pretty sure magic is gonna do quite well. Um this next year. Like I, I actually am gonna purchase some Hasbro stock, because I think that uh Regardless of the health of the game, I think the company that owns them is going to make a lot of money. Oh, he's still waiting on the cards in the mail, huh? I hope you enjoy Hammer Time. Kano about to open three monkeys. Oh, man, that'd be fun. What is this, pack 145? That sounds like fun. Inacker, welcome. Kefka's calling a monkey in pack two. I have not. In like 145 or so packs opened, I have not opened a single Raghavan. I haven't actually opened that many Chase Mythics. I opened a playset of Urza Saga. I haven't had to buy any of those. I opened one Solitude and I opened one Subtlety. And that's like, other than maybe fetch lands, which aren't worth that much on Moto, 
right now. Um, I've I've opened and sold a couple of Merktide regions too. But other than that, like the remainder of the cards I've opened are just worth like a couple of tickets at most. I've not opened like any of the real big expensive cards. <laughs> Kano opens one solitude. How appropriate. <laughs> oh man. Surprised he opened a subtlety, though. He probably didn't read it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, because you think about it, I've done, like... If you count all the drafts that I've done on stream... Um, and the draft, So I've done 32 drafts for videos. I've done between, like, four and seven drafts on stream. So that's 39... 40 times three packs each. So those, those are like 120 packs. I guess. It's 36 packs to a booster box. I don't know about Modern Horizons. Um But it's it's a lot of it's a lot of packs. It was just some rough estimation, man. It's like it's like three boxes, I think. But when we start getting up into a case and not seeing the chase, chase mythic, then then we'll worry. <laughs> uh, when we've done about double what I have now. You've seen a monkey every two to three boxes or so? Well, then we're overdue. <laughs> Any pack now. We'll open up a Ragavan. Go like $100 positive. Uh, yeah, I, I briefly mentioned, because somebody else... Oh, oh that Sean asked. I don't like Universes Beyond. I don't like the idea of bringing other IPs into the mechanical realm of magic. Um, I just personally, I don't, I don't find that enjoyable. I kind of, for me, it breaks the verisimilitude of what I'm doing. Um, but it's gonna, they're gonna sell gangbusters and make a bunch of money off of it. So, like, my opinion on it doesn't really matter. It's one thing to do a crossover with an IP that logically makes sense like dungeons and dragons that's owned by the same company and you know fills the same thing and it's one thing and it's kind of another thing to like do the lord of the rings crossover because at least that's high fantasy and it kind of fits in the realm of what what magic is about right um but oh my god an endurance oh 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 <laughs> we got there we did it. <laughs> $55. Endurance. <sighs> Hello Kitty Island Adventure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they already did some cutesy, cutesy crossover. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Of course, I mean, it matters to you guys. If it mattered to any subset of people, it would be the people in chat right now. Um, I think the best card in this pack is Prophetic Titan. If I want to actually dr play with Endurance, I might want to take the Crew Shock here. Um, I'm going to take the Titan, though. Because I don't think I would be playing either of the uh, other uncommons in that pack. Okay, Soul Talisman is really strong, but you have to have it in your opener for it to be good. Um, if we want to play three color, it's not out of the realm of possibility. 
Uh, we could take Sweep the Skies if we were going to do that. Wave Sifter would also be fine for a three-color deck. But I think Soul Talisman has the highest possible upside, so I'm going to take Soul Talisman. Okay. So if we want to do Delirium, Foul Watcher or Hard Evidence is going to be the way to go. Uh, I guess Wave Sifter is also reasonable because it puts um, puts a creature in the grave. But that commits me to playing green. Well, let's take Wave Sifter. Let's, let's try and draft Teamer so it's a little bit different. Charma is rare. It's a 5-mana 4-4 flyer. I've honestly been underwhelmed by a 5-mana 4-4 flyer. Um... I mean, technically, it can get cheaper if your opponent's playing a bunch of non-basic lands, which do exist in this format, but we'll take the Sower. Sower is fixing as well as a creature. Um, I don't know about Tide Shaper. I could play Dagger Tooth. We could also play, like, Simic and then um, Splash Red for Titan. I think that'd be reasonable to do. O three 3 incoming. You can feel it. Oh, good. Um, yeah, let's take the Dagger Tooth. Okay, I do not want Sterling Grove. Said and done would be reasonable. Abundant Harvest also is reasonable. Orchard Strider could be good as well. Um, we don't have anything to buy back with Sed, and the Double Frost is fine. This is definitely better in the Strict to Delirium deck. Sissia, welcome! And an Acker, thank you for gifting a sub. Much appreciated. You're a wonderful human being, and I appreciate the support. Oh gosh, what did I say? What did you clip? That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take Bloodbraid Marauder. Um, I'm at least splashing red in this deck. Um, because of the suspend cards and potential to cast multiple things a turn, I actually think I am going to take Captain Vance. Storm God's Oracle is pretty reasonable. <laughs> That's a good clip. <laughs> Uh, crack open, crack open can be good. I'll take Foul Watcher. Um, it's probably actually, yeah, let's take the tracker. <laughs> oh, you guys have terrible minds. Put Shattered Ego into the sideboard. So that's what Sigma Sigma wanted clipped. <laughs> Take Burdened Aerialist. Watch the first Ragavan I get be never. Um okay, so we've got Terramorph and we have Mind Collapse in this pack. There's also Tireless Provisioner. Um Terramorph is excellent because we have Captain Vance and it's fixing and we're trying to play three colors. So I think I'm going to take Terramorph. Tireless Provisioner fills the same role making treasures. It's just a lot more fragile. Mind Collapse is removal, of which we don't have a lot. It enables Delirium. Um, and it's just a good card, but it is a common. I think we take the Terramorph. They both interact with Captain Vance just in different ways. Kano won't open monkey till they ban it. <laughs> Tarek, I think I think you called it. We'll take a wave sifter. Um, I actually wouldn't mind getting a blessed respite on the wheel. The fog could matter a lot. Okay, Yavi Maya Cradle of Growth actually can be a lot of fixing for us. Um, I wouldn't mind the seal of removal or uh, Rift Sower or Galvanic Relay coming around, but I actually think I'm going to take Yavi Maya here. I think it's good in this deck. The fun thing is, if we did get Ragavan, it would be pretty insane in this deck, I think. Uh, 
Um, okay, so there's a Scurry Oak, Foul Watcher, a Land for Fixing, or an Orchard Strider. Uh, I think I'm going to take the Silver Bluff Bridge. The better our mana is for this deck, the better time we're going to have. Uh, Orchard Strider having basic land cycling is like kind of fixing. Same with Mental Journey. So hopefully one of those cards or the Foul Watcher comes around. Ragavan would be insane in a deck? Wow, Kano. <laughs> Bold predictions here, I know. <laughs> um, Chef's Kiss is good. I think staying away from double red spells is probably a good idea. Uh, my pick here is between Fixing or Gouged Zealot. I'm going to go with the Fixing. Herd Bailoth. We don't deal with 1-1 one -one counters basically at all. Uh, we're not really in the colors, too. If we did, this card would be insane. I think the pick for us here is the Zealot. There's another Herd Bailoth. Wow, okay. Um, I'm going to take the Revolutionist. Someone's going to have a very good green deck, and it's not me, says the man drafting green. Uh, we're going to take Revolutionist, because we're definitely going to be going for value here. We're hoping to pick up some good instant or sorcery removal. Uh, this is pseudo removal with recalibrate, but I kind of want to get this crew shock. Um, we do not have that many instants and sorceries. Maybe I need to take recalibrate for delirium purposes. Yeah, let's take recalibrate. Yavi Maya Elder. Yavi Maya Elder is excellent value. It draws you a ton of cards, basically. I think I like that over Jade Avenger, although Jade Avenger fits into our curve better. I don't know that I would play all these Arcbound trackers. I'm going to take a Blessed Respite. This might actually be a good deck for Fog. Uh, Seal of Removal or Galvanic Relay. We have a few good Storm cards, like Terramorph, Captain Ripley Vance. Maybe we take Galvanic Relay? Yeah, let's take the Relay. Foul Watcher... I think it's better than our other picks. Do we have any good wizards to cycle for? Uh, oh, we have the giant wizard. Step through's fine. I guess I'll take a deep wood denizen. Don't know if I'm playing it. And another blessed respite. Okay. Pack three, Sylvan Anthem. Um, We do not have that many green creatures unfortunately if we did it would be way better like if we had if we had taken the other scurry oak and we got this it would be awesome i think the pick here is storm god's oracle because like the lightning strike attached to the death trigger is just so good okay, this is definitely a kaleida scorch deck 100 percent, we take kaleida scorch uh, second Captain Vance is very tempting. We have no one drops at all. Uh, so I'm also very tempted to take hard evidence. You know, you could pick up green creatures, not at this stage of the game. Uh, Riptide Lab is good with Prophetic Titan only as far as I know. Gargadon is great uh, because of the suspend. So it's kind of between hard evidence and Gargadon. I'm going to go with Gargadon actually. Um, we don't really need Flame Blitz. We have a few different enchantments we can get into the grave already, mainly the Oracles. I think we take a Faithless Salvaging, uh, because it fits with the Storm Bill a little bit. Another Kaleidoscorch and another Terramorph. I definitely have to take the Kaleidoscorch and hope the Terramorph wheels. Because we are three colors. Hmm. That is a storm card. Let's see. We have Faithless Salvaging, Rift Sower, Endurance we can cast for free, Terramorph, and Gargadon. We can we can set up for a storm turn. Uh, we'll take the ooze. 
Um, ha pretty happy to see a Timeless Witness here. I will take a Timeless Witness. Another Oracle is fine. I definitely am sort of regretting not having any one mana spells. Uh, I've passed two hard evidence, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Smell fear or crack open. Uh, we have a couple of 1 1 counters with the ooze. Uh, technically, with Captain Vance, although we're probably already winning if she's got 1 1 counters on her, the tracker. I'm going to take the crack open, though. I think I like the naturalize better. There's a one mana spell. I think I've got to take an Abundant Harvest. Ready to be yelled at by nine-year-olds on Arena. What do you mean? Uh, I'll take Riptide Lab. It does synergi synergize with the Prophetic Titan. I don't think we have any other wizards, though. I guess I'll take the Flame Blitz for the cycle. Although that kind of sucks. Shattered Ego for the side. Two special Fortnite secret layer drops? Yeah, I was worried that you were implying they added voice chat. <laughs> Did we do what? All right, let's uh, group creatures separately and see what we're dealing with here. <laughs> yeah, no Raghavan. Um, so I think we need to stick to stuff that actually gets cast. We probably only want one crack open, but I'm going to drop Flame Blitz. Said and done, the buyback's nice, but it's a little bit expensive. Uh, recalibrate, I might play yet. Am I splashing blue? I think I'm splashing blue. That means I'm not playing Burdened Aerialist, and I'm probably not playing the Foul Watchers, which is bad, because those are my Delirium payoffs. Oh, I'd probably only be playing one Blessed Respite if I'm playing any, and I'm probably going to sideboard them for aggro. And I, I don't need step through. I have one instant. So we can get creature. Oh, I'm not playing tracker, even though it is an artifact. Oh, man. We can get creature, sorcery... Enchantment land into the grave. And that's basically it. Don't think I'm playing Dagger Tooth. Uh, Soul Talisman's like half a land. Okay, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Here, hang on. Let me start that prediction for you. Let me get into my mod chat here. All right, you gambling fiends. Prediction started. Am I going to win the next round or not? So we're red green and we're splashing blue. 
I probably should be playing Foul Watchers. I'm going to drop the crack open out of the main for a Foul Watcher. Because uh, it's really going to help with Delirium. You hate how the gambling system works? You can put in a thousand skulls but only profit six. Well, you're betting against other people. It's not, it's not an odds game. I'm cutting out the middleman. There's no bookies. You're making your own odds, or you have to calculate them anyway. And someone's got a lot of faith in Kano. <laughs> um, oh, I do want to put in this other Foul Watcher. Uh, what is my worst creature besides Foul Watcher? I have, like, no way to discard other than Faithless Salvaging. So maybe I actually don't want Revolutionist. Okay, so Soul Talisman, Yavi Maya, Slagwood, Silver Bluff, and Riptide Lab. Then we'll add Basics. Alright, this looks like a deck. You cannot put together Teamer Draft Chef and say this looks like a deck in good faith. <laughs> Mixum, welcome. I haven't forgotten about your Patreon ask. I just haven't had the time to record it these last few days when I initially planned on it. I just wanted you to know I hadn't forgotten. It's a, uh, I think it's an eight rack list with Douthy Voidwalker in it. Sounds good, buddy. <laughs> Man, I wish I was sponsored by Sweet Tart Sweet Tarts Ropes. If I did, I'd be diabetic, though. <laughs> All right, um, Natural Tron. So we're gonna keep. Put it leads on Mountain. We draw Forest. Play a mountain, suspend soul talisman, pass the turn. Can you start playing with the Bob Ross lands instead? I don't have any. Opponent plays a lightning spear, we untap, soul talisman ticking down. We draw a foul watcher. So, let's see. We'll play a land. Next turn, play lands. We're going to have four lands when Soul Talisman comes off, which means we can play a three drop and a three drop. So we're going to play Fall Watcher this turn. Full text and lands, Kane, or Big No, you need to read. He didn't have any dur endurance before tonight either. Is that a euphemism? Pass the turn. We'll leave Abundance on top because we're just going to cast that, looking for whatever we don't have the turn we need it. 
want to play as an Ethereum spinner. We untap. Soul Talisman ticks down to one. We draw Abundant Harvest. Let's Kaleida Scorch. Play a Forest. We'll Abundant Harvest. And I think we're going to say non-land here. We get Yavi Maya Elder. Go to combat. Attack for one. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can play Elder, uh, Soul Talisman, and Galvanic Relay. Which gives us a lot of mana to potentially play stuff the turn after that. Four mana for our opponent. Opponent plays a Bottle Golems. Yeah, it's a, it's a double meaning. Soul Talisman coming off Suspend. Uh, we draw Riptide Laboratory. We'll play a Forest. Play Yavimaya Elder. Then Galvanic Relay. Storm Count of 2. So we exile a forest, endurance, and Yavi Maya. We go to combat. It is kind of fun, isn't it? Until you get into false cognates. And then it's not so fun. <laughs> Head our opponent for one, pass the turn. I'm a false cognate. <laughs> You're fluent in one language, but learning three others in three different ways. That sounds complicated. So opponent plays an Arcbound Shikari. Attacks us for four with Trample, no blocks. We untap. We draw Wave Sifter. So play Avimaya. I could evoke it. I'm not going to. Let's play um, Endurance. We'll shuffle our grave. Well, do I want to shuffle my grave back in? I really don't. We'll shuffle our opponent's grave back in. Then play Deepwood Denizen. Attack for one in the air. It is scientifically proven that people who already know multiple languages learn new ones quicker. Reasonable. I started trying to learn Japanese um, just for funsies. Oh gosh. Oh good. It's something to do. Uh, I I had I had like a 260 day streak on Duolingo for Japanese, um, but I was juggling too many things and needed to take a break. So learning a new language is super hard when you don't actually need it for anything. That is true. You could chat with Chair Senpai. <laughs> Um. All right, we untap. We draw Timeless Witness. So play Riptide Laboratory. I think we need to Kaleida Scorch this Guardian Kirin, otherwise we're never going to kill it. Go to combat. Attack for one in the air. <laughs> Bottle plays a land. Plays an arcbound mouser. 
plays a tavern scoundrel. They got a lightning bolt if they want to spear something. They can kill the um they can kill the watcher. Opponent attacks for two with first strike. So they're trying to bait me into killing endurance. So I'm gonna block with Yavimaya Elder. And then sack it to get a bunch of lands and draw a card. Let's get a mountain and an island, because we already have so many green sources because of Yavi Maya. We draw a Rift Sower. Yeah, I finally pulled an Endurance. No kidding, right? Opponent kills my 3-2. We untap. We draw a Forest. Um, so let's see. What can I do here? I can play Timeless Witness and pick up something from the grave. How much mana do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. I could play Timeless Witness, Evoke Wave Sifter, and then cast Galvanic Relay. No worries, Silver. Thanks for stopping by. It's always good to have you. Uh, let's play Timeless Witness. <laughs> it's what I'm here for, Tarek. Pick up Galvanic Relay. Uh, evoke. Wave Sifter. Get some tokens. I probably should have just actually cast that, but... Uh, play a Mountain Galvanic Relay. Let's see what we exile. Bloodbraid Marauder, Eve, and Foul Watcher. Okay. So that's going to be Eve Storm Count next turn. It's pretty good. Opponent untaps. They draw a card. They play a Soul Snare. I see. They're going to attack. Hmm. So we could double block to trade with the bottle golems. That's probably better than letting them get a 7-7. I don't have much removal that could actually answer that because I think I took out the artifact or enchantment destruction. The alternative is block. Yeah, I guess let's we'll let him have a 7-7. Can you drop? So opponent can sack the Shikari, actually. Um, they can pump up the Arcbound Mouser. That's fine. So we lose Timeless Witness, then we untap, draw Mountain, um, play Foul Watcher, get a Surveil Trigger, Storm God's Oracle. Put that in the grave. 
Doesn't look like I can get to Delirium, which is unfortunate. Um, play an island. Play Bloodbraid Marauder. And then we'll play the Progenitor Ooze. Get some ooze tokens. Go to combat. Hit them for four. <laughs> if we hadn't exiled the ooze there, if we'd actually drawn it, we'd have had a way better way better storm turn because we could have suspended some stuff to set up for it we draw captain vance so do we eternalize the witness here we want to get to where we can cast multiple spells a turn let's sack a clue and draw first we get terramorph okay so play a forest. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which I think is just enough because Terramorph puts a land onto the battlefield untapped. So play Captain Vance. And we Terramorph. Get any land. And cast Rift Sower. So Vance gets to shoot something for four damage. Let's shoot the bottle golems. Because if they sack the mouser uh, to put counters on the golems, that's fine. Okay. Doubters, we might be in trouble. <laughs> okay. So we go to combat. We can attack like this. Because we probably, well, we can't block with uh, Bloodbraid Marauder at all. Because Bloodbraid Marauder straight up can't block. <laughs> Opponent exiles the Marauder, okay. So we're going to take two damage in the air. Opponent untaps. They draw. They play a tracker. They go to combat. And they pass. We untap. We cast Terramorph. Get a forest. Draw bridge. Sack a clue, draw a card. Get a Gargadon. Eternalizing does not count as casting. We have no wizards to pick up with Riptide Laboratory. I think we eternalize here. Uh, we don't have any removal. I guess I could get back Storm God's Oracle and then 
do something with that. Alternatively, I can take Abundant Harvest, name non-land, and see if we can hit a card for Captain Ripley Vance. But if I want guaranteed value... Well, let's do the Abundant Harvest thing. So Abundant Harvest, name non-land, Kaleidoscorch, there we go. So Kaleidoscorch, our opponent, red, blue, shoot them with Captain Vance. Play a mountain. Go to combat. And if we attack with everything, they just die, right? Because they take two in the air and they can't stop that. They can not They can sack Bottle Golems to Tavern Scoundrel, but they have to do it before blocks. Yeah, okay. Opponent scoops. That's a win. Kano wins game one. Well, the good news is we have a lot of sideboard for this. We can bring in a crack open, which is going to make our mana a little bit better. Um, question is, what am I getting rid of for crack open? I think it's this denizen, actually. And I kind of want to play a fog. Even though that shuts off our own delirium plan, because we'd likely be recycling our own stuff. Eh, let's just, let's just run it back. All right, this hand isn't bad. Um, if we draw green mana, this hand's amazing. I think we keep, we've got a Kaleidoscorch. We can cast a Galvanic Relay as a really bad cantrip. But it leads on Plains Mouser. We untap and draw Endurance. Okay, that doubles the depth we can get with uh, Galvanic Relay. Play Mountain, pass the turn. D Slayer, welcome, how's it going? Pona plays a mountain, attacks us for one. Take one, go to 19, opponent goes to 21. We untap, draw another mountain, play an island. We have to collide a scorch here. D Slayer is one of my oldest mods. <laughs> I think he became a mod in 2015. <laughs> nice. Sounds good. Gonna be cooking some good food, are we? Wanna play a Mishra's Factory. Because your takes are often instant, interesting enough for me to be willing to listen to them on their own. So I suppose I could, I just I'd probably need to be prompted. Um, let's play a mountain, and uh, I'm not going to go... I think I am just going to cast Galvanic Relay here because we really need to find green mana. Crack open is not green mana. Let's see. Opponent plays another planes. They got a mono skeleton. All right. No, he's not. <laughs> he's got other stuff to be doing. There's the forest. Okay. Play a forest. Crack open the skellion. Opponent pings us for one. That's fine. I'm going to hold off on um, suspending this Rift Sower. We're going to hard cast Wave Sifter, which is going to be good clock, I think. Let's 
We untap. We draw Gargadon. Okay. So, do we want to suspend Gargadon this turn? We're one mana off of casting it. Let's just cast it. Play a Wave Sifter. Let's get some tokens. Opponent must have a very reactive hand. Or they're missing a color of mana or something. Or they're really flooded. There's a third color of mana. But it plays a parcel mirror. That than like your regular Wi-Fi? <laughs> That's crazy, Victim. We untap. Draw Riptide Laboratory. Um Let's crack a clue. Get a Faithless Salvaging. Go to combat. Let's see what our opponent does here. Attack for three in the air. Play an island and pass the turn. Um, I want my opponent to spend their mana for that parcel mirror on their own turn. I'm, I think I'm going to ditch Riptide Laboratory to this Faithless Salvaging. That is very strange. Opponent plays a Gorilla Shaman. They're going to destroy our treasure. Cast Endurance. Oh, he wants to make some beet meat. <laughs> That's something I should do. I should rec I should make a video tutorial on how to make Melanesa. Basically, you just get some pork chops, beat the hell out of them, and then uh, fry them in a pan with some breading. But oh, I I was supposed to sack that clue, but I didn't. <laughs> oh well. Opponent, passing. Kano did say beat me when he was referring to Milanesa. Uh, actually, we're not going to Faithless Salvaging just yet. Untap. We draw Storm God's Oracle. Hmm. Play Riptide Laboratory. We have seven mana, so I could cast Kaleidoscorch if I wanted to. I could play the Oracle and the Sower. I think we just attack and then play Gargadon. Opponent would have to animate Mishra's Factory if they wanted to double block Endurance, and then we could kill both things they blocked with. So attack them for six. Opponent no blocks. They take six. They go to twelve. Well, cast a Gargadon. Drop. Almost hit the light bulb. <laughs> that would have been bad. Opponent untaps. Red, white, lightning spear. <laughs> and they do nothing. We untap, draw a Bloodbraid Marauder, which we are very far off from having the Cascade ability of. Let's play a Storm God's Oracle. 
because that's going to be our, our combat trick. If they block uh, Gargadon, they're going to have to block with two different creatures that have two power, meaning Factory and Mirror, and then sack Lightning Spear, which they don't have the mana to do. So go to combat. Attack with everybody. <laughs> I opened an Endurance. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, you're rooting for me to lose. Hey, it's still not a Raghavan. 130 some odd packs later. Three mana for the opponent. They are going to spear the Wave Sifter. Okay. Yeah, just about. If you count all the drafts I did on stream, which are not in the uh, numbered series on my YouTube channel, uh, I have drafted about 130 packs. Um, uh, yeah, pass the turn. So opponent's probably hoping to have a soul snare uh, to answer this Gargadon. That, that was why it was a meme on the YouTube channel. For those of you that haven't seen that six second video, I recommend you do. It's funny as heck. Oh, believers. Believers, that one's for you. All right, new prediction is open for round two. Place your bets now. Background art is Jace's Sanctum. Uh, the four mana enchantment that decreases the cost of instants and sorceries and lets you scry when you cast one, I think. I think it's from the second Innistrad set, so Shadows. I like it because it looks like a fantasy version of this dark basement that I'm in. Wow. Five to one on win. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of excited for the um, uh, upcoming Innistrad sets. Um, D Slayer, I think I'm I think I'm the most excited for the two Innistrad sets. Uh, if you're talking about the oh, was it Origins? Oh, I don't know why. Uh, you know why I was thinking of uh, Arcane Melee from Avacyn Restored. That's why. Um. I'm, if you're talking about the sets that just got announced for the 
showcase. I am most excited for uh, Kamigawa and or the like gangster Streets of New Capenna set, turn of the century gangster Art Deco. That looks awesome. Um, and I was when they announced it, they said it slightly before the art came on screen, and I was like, oh no. And then I saw the art, and I was like, oh yeah. All right, Mulligan. This'll do. We'll keep. Uh, we're gonna put back Foul Watcher. Okay, drop. Let's go ahead and start by suspending Rift Sower. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Mist Vault Bridge. We untap Rift Sower, taken down. We get a Mountain. Arthurian Fantasy also sounded cool until I learned it meant Adventures in Oko. Uh, play a Mountain, pass the turn. Speaking of Arthurian Fantasy, I recently saw the Green Knight movie. That movie is really weird. I liked it. I think it was good. It was just really weird. Uh, we draw a Deepwood Denizen. And I think we're going to cast Galvanic Relay. Because we need to hit a land for next turn. Okay, we hit Salvaging and Silver Bluff Bridge. Go to combat. Attack for one. Pass the turn. Looks like MTG beats Cyberpunk 2077. I think that was what they were going for. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping for like corporate dystopia in, in Kamigawa. I think that would be awesome. We draw Storm God's Oracle, so play Silver Bluff Bridge. And uh, do we play the Salvaging? We can't really... I guess I could evoke Wave Sifter, but I want to cast Wave Sifter. Um, let's just pass the turn. I don't think we need the Salvaging, so we're going to leave it in the, in the Exile Zone. Recall, thanks for stopping by. Kefka, good luck. I'm down for more Snake Tribal. Opponent plays a, another Storm God's Oracle. Plays a tap land. Then passes. Flash in Endurance. Uh, we'll shuffle this back in the deck. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's up with... Uh, what's going on with New Phyrexia. Go to combat. Attack for three. Opponent blocks with Storm God's Oracle. Okay, they kill Endurance, that's fine. Play a Forest. Play the Oracle. Play Deepwood Denizen, pass the turn. I'm kind of saving this Wave Sifter, hopefully after this other Oracle dies. Opponent basic land cycles a battle plan, gets an island. Unholy heats the denizen, then passes. We untap, we draw a mountain. You want new busted artifacts? Yeah, we'll get them in the Brothers War set. Go to combat. Attack with Storm God's Oracle. Opponent blocks with Storm God's Oracle. Pump the Oracle, pump the Oracle, trade, shoot the mirror. Will the Kami still be there? Um, I think, I think there are going to be Kami, but not anywhere near the extent of what we saw previously. Play a mountain, and now we can cast Wave Sifter. Which will give us a couple of extra draws here. Plus, now we have a good flyer, um, and theoretically a lot of their removal is gone. 
Opponent plays a Sojourner's Companion. We draw a Slagwood's Bridge. Draw a card. Yavi Maya. Draw a card. Eve. Play the bridge, go to combat, and attack for three. I'd like to draw an Abundant Growth. They have an Unholy Heat. Dang. We need uh, something that'll let us cast multiple spells a turn. So we can get value off of our Progenitor Ooze here. Just wait, we're going to have Bobble and Standard? Please no. Play Foul Watcher. Uh, forest into the Grave. Uh, play Yavi Maya. Play the Ooze. It's nothing special right now, but... Uh, at least it'll block. Opponent Madness is a crab, or Madness is a Scophos Reaver gets a crab. Immediate card draw bobble this time. I would probably stop playing modern. And I'm not even making that up. I know that just sound like sounds salty, but I would not play modern. <laughs> So sick of free garbage. Opponent buys back uh, an, uh, an unholy heat. Attacks for a ton. Block here, take eight. We untap, we draw nothing. Um, And that means we're dead. DFD Ruri, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Um, let's play some crack opens. Modern Rises 2 in a dog cam. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I think in this matchup, I'm going to cut a Watcher and you know i'm only gonna run one crack open surveil opt is from the upcoming innistrad set the one that releases closest all right i'll play first okay we've got all of our colors of mana we get a little bit of top deck manipulation and some extra card draw Lead on an island, pass the turn. Opponent plays a tap land, we draw. Forest. Play a mountain, foul watcher. Surveil. Prophetic Titan, definitely to the top. No worries, I completely agree with you. It is very difficult to keep track of all of the magic releases. Play a forest, go to combat. Attack for one. Pass the turn. So we're probably going to Faithless Salvaging on our opponent's end step. Or now, we'll just get rid of uh, Mountain here. Okay, we get a Silver Bluff Bridge. Faithless Salvaging rebounds. I'm going to put Silver Bluff Bridge in the grave because we need artifacts there. We draw Yavi Maya. Play a Mountain. Go to combat. And attack for one. Hit our opponent down to 18, pass the turn. They play a mountain, they attack, they pump, just once. Play another Storm Gods Oracle, that's a lot of burn. Um, Play a forest, pass the turn. We are going to block with Foul Watcher when our opponent attacks. Um, that will turn on Delirium for Prophetic Titan, which will allow us to answer the other Storm God's Oracle. That is provided they pump all the way, but they probably will not. They probably won't even pump to kill the Foul Watcher. Okay. We untap. Don't give them access to green. Yeah, I'm avoiding it right now. Um, let's see. Play an island. 
Go to combat. Attack for one. The problem is if I Prophetic Titan to kill one of those Storm Gods Oracles, they probably have an Unholy Heat to kill my Prophetic Titan. So the card advantage mode is probably what I should be picking here. Oh, they just have Lose Focus. Okay. Well, that is what we in the business would call bad. Pass the turn. When it plays a scuttle tide, plays a mountain, attacks us for two, make it three. Okay. We untap and draw Storm God's Oracle. So go to combat. Attack for two in the air. Play a forest, play an oracle. Pass the turn. So they're probably going to madness a Skophos Reaver here. So next turn we can set up a block and potentially kill the Reaver. Opponent gets a crab. They untap. Welcome back, Mixum. Opponent casts a battle plan. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero. Oh. Okay. They go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Block here. They pump. They pump. We pump. We pump. So we're going to take seven. But we get to answer two of their creatures here. And they get to kill one of ours. We untap. We draw a Riptide Laboratory. That is unfortunate. Um, so our only option here is not great. We Kaleidoscorch our opponent. Then we Kaleidoscorch their Oracle. This is going to end up taking us to one unless they build Delirium, in which case we're dead. But, like, we don't have another play. We die otherwise. Oh, never mind. We're just dead. Well, I tried. Doubters, you win this time for anyone who actually bet. I go I generally go 2 and 1. And I've sold a lot of the extra cards. So I spent some money to get started, but other than that, I've generally went about equal. I've put in a little bit of money here and there, but I'm nowhere near positive or anything like that. So. All right. Let me restart the client here and get the other prediction running. So the prediction for round three... It is 25 bucks a draft. I've gone 3-0 a couple of times, which took a lot of the cost out of it. Gosh dang it. Uh, it should have. Did it not? Yeah, it paid out. Let 
All right, so we're moving on to round three. You didn't get your skulls? You should have. I saw that you bet. I have no way to award skulls individually, so I can't, like, make up any problems that would happen with skulls if they do happen. Alright. On to round three. We will get to be on the play. Yeah, we'll keep. All right, so let's start Mountain and suspend Soul Talisman. Pass the turn. Opponent leads on a Swamp. We untap. Soul Talisman ticks down. Uh, draw Forest. Play Forest. Suspend Gargadon. Pass the turn. Welcome, John Eli. How's it going? Opponent plays a Vermin Gorger. Suspend cards ticking down again. We draw Eve. Play a forest, because now if we draw green, uh, we can play Eve Storm Count 2 next turn. Opponent attacks us for two. We untap. Gargadon taken down. Soul Talisman coming off suspend. We draw Mountain. Unfortunate. Play Silver Bluff Bridge. Pass the turn. And opponent scoops. I don't even want to know what's going on. <laughs> They're getting, uh, it looked like they were getting mana screwed. All right, all right. No adjustments. Run it back. Where are these paid actors in $25 drafts? Yeah, like I could afford that. Um. Oh, we don't draw blue mana, it's very bad, but we'll try it. We are on the draw. People who fight to the death for one ticket. I know who you're talking about, I know those kinds of people, I run into them too. But when you play as much magic as I do, you run the full spectrum on like kind of stuff that you encounter. Um, I am going to Kaleida Scorch this one drop. Because I do not want that one drop getting much larger than it is. Um, I have seen everything happen at least once. Like, just dumb stuff. <laughs> Play Storm Gods Oracle, pass the turn. Opponent plays a forest. They play a Squirrel Sanctuary, which gives them a token. They hit us for two. We untap. We draw a Deep Wood Denizen. Go to combat. Attack for one. Opponent no blocks. Okay. Play a forest. Play Storm God's Oracle. Pass the turn. I have gotten a lot of salt. Some of it valid, some of it very not valid. Opponent hits us for four in the air. That sucks. We untap. Draw a mountain. Go to combat. Attack and attack. Hmm, no blocks, huh? Pump. Pump. Connect. Then pump again. We're going to kill the Dray Keeper because that technically represents more damage. Opponent does not have mana to pay to pick up Squirrel Sanctuary. Play a Mountain. Then play Foul Watcher. Does this gain First Strike? Why does this gain First Strike? Foul Watcher number two into the grave you go. Alright, pass to our opponent. Opponent attacks for a lot. Uh, kill a squirrel. We go down to seven. Untap. We draw a forest. Play a forest. And let's go ahead and kill the first striking thing. Four damage here. 
Unfortunately, we do not have Delirium, and our opponent gets to make more tokens. I know, right? Doesn't he, like, look so... He's just like... <laughs> That's my impression of my dog. Alright, opponent passes. We draw Galvanic Relay. Um... Let's play Captain Vance and play the relay. We get a land and a Bloodbraid Marauder. Pass the turn. He is, he's such a great dog. All right, opponent passes. We untap. We draw an island. We have no way to get land into the grave. We already have an enchantment in the grave. So I think what we do is Kaleida Scorch here. Kill the Dray Keeper, because otherwise we'll die to tokens with menace. Opponent picks up Squirrel Sanctuary, so they're holding two Squirrel Sanctuaries. Play an Island. Play Bro uh, Bloodbraid Marauder. Go to combat and pass. Opponent plays a Squirrel Sanctuary. Plays a Squirrel Sanctuary. And passes. We untap. We draw Riptide Laboratory. Play Riptide Lab, play Deepwood Denizen, pass. Opponent untaps. We're definitely bringing in the 4-1 Delirium payoff, or the 4-3 Delirium payoff that pings all of our opponent's creatures. Opponent is going to Flay Essence. Alright, pump. 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 Uh, kill a Squirrel. Flay Essence has no targets. When it goes to combat and attacks. So block, 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 block. Take four, go to three. But I can pick up the squirrel sanctuaries and replay them if they want. They probably will and probably should. Okay. So I gotta deal with at least one squirrel this turn. Get a wave sifter. Play Wave Sifter. I can block four squirrels, which means I get hit for two. Oh look, we're dead to bolt. Pass the turn. I should have attacked with that Bloodbraid Marauder, actually, because it can't it can't block. So that was a mistake. Bona plays a land, goes to combat and passes. Crack a clue, draw a card. It's an island. Untap. We draw a Rift Sower. Crack a clue. Draw a forest, play a forest, play Rift Sower, go to combat, attack for three. That's that's what I want to do this turn, yeah. Opponent trades. That's actually good. 
Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Nested Shambler. That card is a little bit of a problem. Opponent passes. So pick up Prophetic Titan. Untap. We draw another Wave Sifter. Play an island. Um, I can kill a Squirrel token, or I can dig... How much mana do I have? 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's Prophetic Titan... Oh no, I have 11, but I don't want to tap Rift Sower. Um... Dick Record, I haven't drafted a single Raghavan yet. Do we have any life gain? Um... I don't think we do. Actually, let's just start shooting our opponent. And I can play out Wave Sifter because it doesn't change the number of blockers we have. Which is five. Pass to our opponent. Does the card just not exist? I'm, maybe that's why it's not showing up in the metagame. People haven't actually gotten any. Opponent attacks us for one. Um, we're going to risk it and take one. So we can hit them for six in the air. Then shoot them for two and then shoot them for three. That's lethal. All right, go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent goes to five. Kaleidoscorch. Kaleidoscorch. And I technically could have gotten one more color out of that with Rift Sower. Yeah! Two and one again! <laughs> All right. And we got an endurance. Excellent. All right. That one's for the believers. Thank you, DFD Ruri. Much appreciated. Normally, I would do another one um, because that one was kind of fast, but I'm exhausted and I still have stuff I have to do tonight. Um, I still need to record for YouTube tomorrow. Um, and if I don't stop streaming now, I will not have the time. But... Good night, D-Slayer. It was good to hear from you. Sorry I didn't respond to you on Facebook sooner. I was navigating phone call hell. Stop, go live again, and upload two VODs. I've got... Uh, I will be streaming again on Saturday. I don't know what time, but I'm planning to do a second stream on, str on Saturday this week. It will probably not be magic-related, or if it is magic-related, it will be very, very casual magic. It will not be... Uh, my regular style of content, I think. So, uh, I have no plans for it currently, but it'll be something. It'll it'll be something that I want to do, whatever that is at the time. I'll figure it out when I get there. <laughs> yes, buddy. I don't. Oh, let's see. Let's see if I can show you this face. What's that? Right there. What's that? You laugh, but I've actually beaten Battletoads and Battle Maniacs, sir. He does. He's a needy boy. He needs lots of love and attention. You can tell he hates it. You can absolutely tell he just despises attention. No one's beaten the Nez one, though. I got close. 
I've beaten the speeder bike level on both, I want you to know. And anyone who tells you that the speeder bike level is the hardest level is a liar. They just never got past it. <laughs> the 2020 remake doesn't count. The 2020 remake isn't even Battletoads. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, you're all wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was really, really fun to... Uh, Get some Modern Horizons 2 done and hear from hear from all my friends. <sighs> yep. Have a good night, Deck Record. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>